for those that might be listening that are new to Sly or whatever, um, briefly tell me what what are your three favorite Sly songs? Okay, well, as you know, it's an impossible task. That's but why I always I, limited it to three because right. and, and, and I <laughs> I can't deal with the big hits. They're too big to get my head around. No one deals with the hits. Real real music fans like the filler. So I'd say, okay, if I had to pick three, I'd say We Love All, which is a, a outtake from it's a 60s high psychedelia, high echo, but it's he writes the lyrics that later I would come to see as these very compressed, weird sly lyrics, like uh like the funk it stronger type lyrics where he says it's like um he he loves all the band loves everyone. Then he I says, I don't know that. Oh man. He he does everything. And then he says, he loves everything. And then he says, unlike the police in his gun, unlike the judge and his son, unlike the local meter ma'am, unlike the latest scam. And so he, they're listing out all these things that aren't embracing of everything. And that mm. song has such a big, weird, spacey 60s sound lots of echo and lot, so so that's really interesting it doesn't sound like anything else they were doing at the time very spare in some ways second one is probably sylvester which is this tiny little thing that's not even 30 seconds album. right it's this fragment on the last proper album that he did on ain't but the one way it probably was a piece of tape that someone recovered at the thing he he his memory of it was he remembered making it and he remembered sort of what it was about, but he didn't, he wasn't a hundred percent sure that it made a record because he's like, yeah, that, that little thing I recorded. And it's this incredibly weird, similar to a lot of the songs he made when he was then not famous, this really weird meditation on identity where he's going past a mirror and he sees himself and his mother remembers his name. And it's very, very uh, intense really for what it is, but it's just him playing a little electric piano and singing for 30 seconds. That's and one then, of my three. It's great. And then the third one was a tie, I think, in my mind, between what was I thinking in my head, which is the You like that? Song. I like it for this reason. I'm mad that I can't resist it. Yeah. I don't I'm, know. I'm but, mad. But I hate I hate the album it comes from. I'm mad I can't resist it. And yet, that's not my pick, but I'll say why those I, lyrics are little are are very clever, and ah, I hate that I like that song. For me, the reason that I love it is that in my head, because when you say what was I thinking, we know where it's happening. It's in your head. That's where people think. All right. To add that little part, whether it's redundant or brilliant or drug album, I don't know for sure. The in my head, which in the song when you hear it becomes this bizarre hook, like it, you can't. You can't get it out of your own head. And it's very catchy and it's kind of simplistic, but psychologically complicated. So I don't know. That's I have a weakness for that. But then the one I picked, he recorded throughout his absence. And he and a lot of them are bedroom demos. And then some of them he would run into a friend or a co-creator who would say, Oh, I like that. <laughs> Let's do that. So in the 80s, when he would have a song with the bar case, a song with Earth, Wind, and Fire. He had the Jesse Johnson song, obviously, which is not an original. That's a song he comes on to, to as a duet. Mm -hmm. There's a song called The Yellow Light that he did that kind of trickles out on this giant funkadelic record called First You Gotta Shake the Gate, which is a triple record from 2014-ish. And it's heavily treated vocals and just like this weird groove song. And he's probably saying something but I don't, mm -hmm. I can't make it out and he doesn't, he can't make it out anymore. And it's just like this bizarre um, experiment and kind of incomprehensible, really deep funk that I, I love. It's so weird. And it just appears. It's like uh, those funkadelic records, those late ones are like party records. Like the, how late do you have to be before you're absent where George was just pulling in everyone, you know, Belita mm -hmm. Woods with the song and uh, you know, whatever, uh, um, there's some old songs, some old Zap demo in here. Somebody finish it. So they're kind of like compilations, not the family series, but the big records. And so yeah. th that one. So so what are so you so Sylvester is one of your three, and then what are your other two? Sylvester is one of my three. I like I love Life of Fortune and Fame, and you know, probably I I 
even now, one of the reels, we cannot find any of the reels from the life sessions. And I got to know what happens at the end of I'm an animal. Like, I'm an animal is just a weird song. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, I I would, it's not like I'm going to, and I've asked the band members about it and they don't have many memories about, you know, again, it's just like, oh, uh, we, we went in the studio and we recorded it. But for me, that song says everything about Sly's weirdness. It's like a kid's, it's like a kid's sing along, but it's also psychological like psychedelic and you know larry is doing exemplary work on his bass that's not thumb related and you know cynthia shows off her jazz chops like a lot's happening in that song which is a filler but it's still like super brilliant to me so i, I like it a lot i i love that song too and, and i I think same thing where people, it's a long time ago. So people don't remember what you're hearing on the reels is sort of lost to time, except that it's recorded mm -hmm. to me, that song. And this is just me as a fan is I always thought those are kinds of reaction songs to dance to the music in a way, in a way. And that to me, I, I always heard that song as like, I'll, I'll do what you want. I'll song and dance. I'll be your song and dance, man. And then he has something in there. I forget the exact line where he says, "My conscience will die." I'll I'll be an my animal. My conscience is my guy. Oh my, I, he, no! I think he says, "My conscience." Does he say, "My conscience will will die off"? Something. Oh, the thinking kind. My conscience is my guide. Or I, I, now I gotta I look up the lyrics. Wrong. I might and maybe the lyric is vague. But I always heard it as this weird thing of him saying, for my purposes, of him saying. I'll dance. What is it? I'll dance like a kangaroo. Uh, so to me, it, when I thought about it, I love that song. It was always like him saying, I did whole new thing. Mm -hmm. I'm a composer. I studied composition. I, I'm i working in the rock space, in the pop space, in the soul space, in the whatever the funk space is becoming, but I'm a composer. And then it kind of falls flat. And then it's like, as we know, dance to the music is a massive hit, but also kind of a walk in the park for him and a little annoying. Mm -hmm. Like, why is that how I have to introduce myself to America? That right. I, Don't you know who I am or what I'm capable of? And so a lot of that tension of that third record is, I think, those two things. And and like life is him, him fighting back like I'm smart and you're going to take me on my own terms and it right. doesn't work. And right. so and then the he has to make I, totally, and and, that's and then why he has to make, to make stand. A lot of musicians, that's their favorite record, like hell because, yeah, because it's so. It's kind of like what I was saying at the very beginning, just to bring this full circle, which is that you try not to, you make the work, and then you don't care about its reception. I don't right. care. I mean, I, ego care, but I don't really care. Go to people the care. It, we just <laughs> you make your thing, yeah. right. That is the rare case where someone so smart is able to share with you, well, no, it kind of does matter. Or at least when there's a tension created mm -hmm. between all my people telling me how Teo Macero loved the first record, you know, fell over himself, and yet the audience didn't embrace it. Then I do this record and the audience embraces it. And music people are like, eh, not the first record. Right. And so you got to get back to that space. And finally, Stan synthesizes everything. I mean, you know, I don't know how you feel about this and what you're finding, but I, I find some of the most fascinating answers about like, he said something kind of weird and cool. Like, you couldn't be an artist in 1968 and not make Stan in 1969. You know, like, you, you're an antenna when you're an artist. So you're seeing and hearing everything. You're bringing it all in. And I thought that was kind of fascinating. And that speaks to what we think about Riot, which is that, is it his depression and his darkness or is it the 60s hangover that he's channeling or is it a mix of those things? Is it- I'm, I'm still know? trying to come to grips with my feelings on Riot.